Hello students, today we're going to remember some of the parts of the nervous system of its functions. The first part is to remember how those neurons communicate, and this is by a special type of communication known as synaptic communication. It is synaptic because it uses a space between the neurons known as the synapse. The first neuron is known as the presynaptic neuron, presynaptic, and the other one, the postsynaptic neuron. Now, the communication between, between these two cells, it's performed using a substance known as neuro neurotransmitters, usually attached to membrane receptors here, and together, neurotransmitter plus receptor, ensures the communication through the cell. Now, red neurons communicate using electrochemical communication. How do we call this electric impulse? It's known action potential. The action potential is produced by a difference in the concentration between these two ions, sodium and potassium. How is it possible for the ions to move inside and outside the cell using special protein uh, that we have inside the membranes of the cells, known as channel proteins. Now, when enough sodium ions go inside the neuron, the neuron will be slightly more positive than the outside of it, and that will cause an electrical impulse that we call, that we call the action potential. The action potential will go from one cell, then change to chemical communication with the neurotransmitters, and then action potential again. Now, the next part we're going to see is how does the reflex work? Now, why do we call it a reflex? A reflex is a very short and quick response of our body, general, generally to uh, pain or also some involuntary movements that we naturally perform, like when the doctor checks your knee reflex. Now, the reflex is made by three special types of neurons. The sensory neuron, which is like the green cable we have in this diagram, in charge of receiving the stimuli or the information from the environment. The sensory neuron will communicate with the interneuron here which is the red fragment diagram. Interneurons have the special function of selecting what to do or deciding what to do, processing the information. And then later, they are going to communicate the brain what is happening. The third element is the motor neuron. Motor neuron has a function to communicate the answer or the response of the interneuron to the effector. In this case, the effector will be the muscles on your arm in charge of moving the hand away from the pain or the flame or whatever is causing this reflex. Now, nervous system is divided in two very big areas. The first one is the central nervous system. Because of its location, we call it like that, central nervous system, and it is formed by two organs, the brain and the spinal cord. And this diagram will be the located in the human body. Now, the second big area is the peripheral system, which be all the uh, go outside the spinal cord and communicates with the rest of the body. Peripheral nervous system generally has some major divisions that we will summarize in this diagram. Nervous system, as we saw, is divided into the central the brain and the spinal cord, and the peripheral nervous system. Peripheral nervous system, which is I would like you to focus your attention in, it's divided into the autonomic nervous system, which is in charge of the automatic responses of our body, generally uh, related with the organ function and some gland functions, and also it has a somatic part or the somatic nervous system which is in charge of communicating the sense organs and also some voluntary muscles. Now remember that the word soma means body. So this is like the part that we can in some part uh, or in some way control. Now the autonomic nervous system has two branches, the sympathetic branch or sympathetic division in charge of the excitatory responses. Like if we are, uh, for example, a bird, uh, flying or escaping from a predator, 
In the case of the human body, it will be, yes, running or the excitatory response of, I don't know, fighting or something. And the parasympathetic branch, on the other hand, which is in charge of the opposite, like the calm responses, like digesting, breathing, producing some hormones. Now, in the other case, the somatic nervous system is divided also into areas. The sensory part, like the name said it, it will be in charge of the sensory inputs from the environment, hearing, tasting, seeing, and the motor branch, which is in charge of uh, the movements that we can perform. The next thing we're going to see is how is the brain divided so we can study it. The first and the most obvious part is that the brain is divided into sections and these sections are called the hemispheres. We're going to have the right hemisphere and the left one. The important thing about these hemispheres is that they control the opposite side of your body. The right hemisphere, the left side of your body and the left hemisphere controlling the right one. Now, this thing about the brainization is just a theory. It's uh, the idea that the different, different parts of the uh, human behavior, but we are not quite agree uh, in this uh, field. The important thing is that you understand that it is divided in two hemispheres. Now, the next thing to see is the internal sections of the brain. If we divide it in a sagittal plane, the brain will have this uh, called as the hind brain, and it is formed by three things. The spinal cord that we already know, the medulla, and the pons. The three of them control the automatic functions, functions that we can't actually control voluntarily, like breathing, the blood pressure, swallowing, uh, the heart rate. And then this last uh, back part or last part of it will be the cerebellum, in charge of controlling our equilibrium and the coordination of our movements. Now, another way to divide the body will be in these external areas that have special functions and uh, we call them lobes. Now, the frontal lobe here, the red section, is in charge of the problem solving and the uh, ability to solve problems, the uh, mathematical thinking, uh, all the um, like things that help you to understand or to comprehend new things. Now, the green area is the temporal lobe, and it has a very special function, which is in charge of uh, understanding the hearing or the language that we uh, receive by a hearing response. Uh, now, another important thing is that in the frontal lobe, we have an area known as the Broca area. Together with this area, known as the Wernix area, together they both are in charge of uh, uh, processing how do we understand the language. Now, the orange section, known as the Pari Pari is in charge of controlling or regulating the responses of many areas in the body, on the brain in this case. The back section of the brain is the occipital lobe in charge of uh, the vision. And finally, will the cerebellum that you already know about the equilibrium and the um, coordination of your movements. Remember that all these four areas are known as the brain lobe. Don't get confused with the hemispheres. We only have two hemispheres, two sections. And these are like the four main areas in which we can divide the brain cortex. The frontal, parietal, the temporal, and the occipital lobe. Finally, we're going to see a very special system inside the brain or inside the brain structure, which is known as the limbic system. It is formed by these organs, the hypothalamus here with the thalamus, the hippocampus and the amygdala, four parts together forming the limbic system. And it has a very special function, controlling the fear response, the rage, sexual responses or sexual desire, also feeling someone, hunger, thirst, very basic needs in the human body, and the memory of the places and faces. It's a very special system. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you solved some of the doubts. We're going to uh, try to do more videos about all these topics, and uh, well, 
uh, see you next video goodbye